what you're doing. Well, sure. Okay. Uh, I was really originally from Connecticut, but I came here in 1966 for Peace Corps training. And then after Peace Corps in the Marshall Islands, I went back, got my MD in, in University of Connecticut. Uh, did some training in emergency medicine in California and then ended up on the Big Island 25 years ago and working in the Kona Hospital. I was vice chief of staff there when I left. And uh, then I went back to school and actually got a degree in psychology and was halfway through a, a program in mental health counseling. So I've had a lot of psychology courses as well as medical training. And I think that's important for this issue because it's not just medication, it's, it's the psychology of, of dying. And so many people, so many people don't want to talk about death and dying, and in, and planning in advance. And your uh, letter, which we will post, your letter was so good, and and it dealt with all of those issues that we have to deal with prior to making a decision about medical aid and dying. You want to tell us about that, or how you came to this issue? Well. I should say, this is uh, Representative Richard Creasy. Oh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Island, so you can make lower thirds to show who he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I re represent Richard Cregan. Thank you. And, uh, you know, this issue has been uh, on the table for, for some time. Doctors deal with this issue all the time in hospitals. You know, they're controlling people's pain, but that control of pain often results in them dying. And uh, they call that a dual effect. But, I mean, you know, the, you don't do this to patients without the, their consent, but they say, you tell them, look, we're going to help your pain, but if we control your pain, we give you enough medication to control your pain, you're likely to stop breathing. And they'll say, I'm good with that. Okay. So it's, it, it's this isn't something that's uh, foreign to physicians. It's, it's part of our duty as physicians to help people not only to live, but help to have a peaceful death. So physicians have been doing this, not in the sense of euthanasia, but in the sense of helping people to die a peaceful death. And uh, I, I think this is just recognizing that we're all going to die someday, that most people, if you ask them how they want to die, well, at least many of them will say, I'd just like to die in my sleep. And this is a way of having people die in their sleep. We, we give them, put them into a deep sleep, and during that sleep, they, they die. And uh, it, it can, it's a very peaceful way to go. It's peaceful for the patient, but it's also very peaceful for the family. Too many people uh, in our society are forced to, to uh, take their lives by very violent means. You know, we talk about gun violence and homicides. There's one and a half gun suicides for every gun homicide. Now, not all these people are dying, but many of them are older people who uh, are ill and, and uh, are looking for a way out of life, right? out of a tortured life or a very painful life. And then you have couples who, uh, you know, murder suicides where a husband, you know, sees his wife suffering, puts her out of his misery, and then tries to kill himself. I mean, those are kind of some of the things that that happen in our society. We don't like to talk about those things either, but they do happen. So this is a, a, a way, a better way, of helping people to deal with the fact that they're dying and to allow them to have a choice. Not not anyone has to make this choice, and most people are not going to make this choice. But the people who do want to make this choice, and I think it's a, an excellent choice for some people. You know, I would like to have that choice. I don't know if I would use it. I mean, it's kind of scary thinking about dying, right? Yeah. I mean, you're here, and then you're not here. As a physician, it's, you know, the transition for most people is very peaceful. They just, they stop breathing. That's it. Mm -hmm. And they're gone. And, 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 this, and this method, that's what happens. You just stop breathing. And then you're no longer there. But if you're with the people that love you and uh, that you love, it's such a, in my view, a much better way of going. And it's not at the hospital usually. It's usually at home, you know, with your family, your dogs, your pets, you know, in, in the place you love. I mean, I don't want people in Hawaii have to go to Oregon or California to, to, to seek this. I think we should be able to have it here. Do you, think we will, do you think that the bill will pass this year? Do you have a feeling about that? I think it's very likely, you know, I'm not sure, extremely likely, but it's very likely it will pass. The speaker introduced it. He believes in it. Uh, four of our governors 
uh, are supporting it. Uh, I think most of the people in the House and Senate support it. But, you know, it's one of these issues that has a lot of moral loading for people, and people sometimes are hesitant to, to vote on bills like this. We had the same kind of trepidation about same-sex marriage. Right. Right? So I think there was a lot of that trepidation whenever it was 10 years ago when it almost passed. And, uh, you know, some of the religious organizations came out very strongly and kind of scared some people into not voting for it. Hopefully that won't happen this time. Well, now I feel that if you are a Catholic or a Mormon or whatever, and your religion says you don't do this, and you chose to follow that religion, then all means you don't do that. But for the rest of us should have the option. That should not stand in the way of other people who do not belong to those religious or traditions or organizations, that they should not be able to stand in the way of other people. That That's my feeling how, if we are a democracy, then how can a religion stand in the way of the rest of the population? 